Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and I do believe right now it's time for a little Mail, Mountains of It. It'll be a red letter day when the postman blows mail call. All right then, let's get down into it. I got all varieties of mail today, which is nice. I got YouTube comments we can talk about. I got real mail both packages and letters from viewers. So uh, let's get down to it and do it. Where do we start? Let's look at some comments first and then we'll get into some of these actual uh, physical mail items over here. So the most recent video I did, uh, well, one of them you may notice here is my Cheeseburger Time t-shirt announcement video. That was two videos ago. Just gotta say real quick before I get into the viewer comments, Big thank you to everybody out there. A big old group of you came out and supported the t-shirt campaign that we launched over at Bonfire. There's a link up here. There's still time. It goes until April 19th and then it shuts down. And this is limited edition. So to all of you out there that bought one of these, we're going to retire this as of April 19th. So maybe next year we do like a sweatshirt instead or something like that, but we'll come up with a new design. That's the t-shirt and uh, yeah, it is still available. So thank you everybody out there who grabbed one of those. It has the uh, Syntax 77 emblem on the back as well. Kind of like the end screen of my videos, right? <laughs> What are you doing? Snack time. You're on a break. No. No? I don't think you're in the video. You guys sit back here. Now the dog's in front of us. I wasn't expecting this. Hi. Hi. You want a snack? Um, no, I'm actually, I ate before I came down here. Yeah, people do love when you eat on mic though, or camera. Oh, uh, should I get closer? Yeah, you should. Oh. How was it going? It's pretty good. What are you doing? I'm just, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, this is going to be a quick one. I'm just going to knock it out. It'll probably be like 10 minutes as you drop turkey and cheese everywhere. Um, I guess maybe we'll add another couple minutes. I was just saying thank you to people for picking up the t-shirt, which I'm sitting in front of now, but uh, that's okay. And then I was going to read some viewer comments, open some mail. Would you like to do that with me since you're here? Did Carol say anything? Carol, no. Well, the original Carol has actually been gone since that second video, um, but there are still Carols out there. But we're not going to give any Carols. Don't be a Carol. Yeah, don't be a Carol. We're not going to give any Carols any love today or uh, response. All right. Well, I love so, you. Okay. I'm going to go now. Okay. All right. All right. Love you too. Bye. All right. Bye. That's it. Quick cameo, huh? Don't forget. Have a snack. Thanks, Sarah. Oh, no. Now the dog's walking around. All right. Oh, good, Yeah, thanks. All right, bye, bro. All right. Nolly, go lay down so we can continue. Where was I here? Uh, yes, I was about to read some comments. And I was mentioning uh, videos recently. So the most recent video I actually did was not t-shirt video, but it was my budget backpacking gear list video. It actually just came out pretty recently, like I said. And it's going well. People seem to be responding favorably to it. So I really just kind of did that video on a whim. I guess that's the way it usually goes. Um, you never know what's going to resonate with people, but people seem to be sharing that with their friends that they've been trying to convince to get into backpacking maybe, as well as some viewers on this channel that are new to backpacking. Hopefully that video is helpful to you. Check it out. If, uh, what I just said describes you, if you haven't already, um, it's lengthy. It's like an hour, but just sit down and we go through, uh, my whole pack, but not from a weight perspective, from a cost perspective was my focus for that video. Although ironically, it only came in at like 13 pounds. It ended up being a very lightweight gear list as well. So it was kind of the best of both worlds. Anyway, um, so a lot of these videos, or I should say comments, will probably be from that video. But let's just spin through and see. This is from Silent Paul. He says, if you want the Reflectix Pot Cozy, which would be one of these homemade guys like this. This is a really old beat up one, but that right there. If you want a Reflectix Pot Cozy, you can get it cheaper by buying a cheap car window shade. They are made of the same stuff, and I found them for like a dollar at the flea market. That is a great point. I, I don't know why I didn't even think of that, but thank you for bringing that up. You know those big window shades that you see in people's cars to keep the sun out? It's like the same stuff as this, which I bought a roll of for like 15 bucks. But if all you need is to do just one small project like this, you could get one of those window shades for a buck, like he said, and you could actually get a lot of projects out of it. So good looking out there, Silent Paul. Thank you. Um, that is pretty cool. And then 
I make mine with the official like Reflectix tape because this stuff is for like water heaters and stuff like that. But duct tape is just fine too. I've repaired, actually this one has been repaired with duct tape uh, years ago. It's finally starting to come apart, but duct tape does work on the Reflectix. So thanks for that tip. And to everybody else out there, hopefully that helps you as well. Uh, never heard of hitting the table on a Cheers before. That's from the Sub-Zero um, winter camping in a snow trench video. Yeah, a lot of people responding with whether or not to tap the table after Cheers. That's funny. Um, this one says, this is from Bear Off the OT on the budget camping uh, gear list video. I've been using a foil, I think uh, that's autocorrect at work here. I've been using a folded piece of aluminum foil for years as a windscreen. I keep it doubled up in case of an opportunity to make a campfire spam, etc. Another option I'm sure you would have around the house as well. Folded into squares keeps the foil rigid and helps portion it out when used for cooking. Yeah, good point. I mean, why not just fold up several times a piece of aluminum foil and use it as a windscreen for your stove, particularly like a DIY alcohol stove that doesn't really need a ton of coverage. And then like you said, it's dual purpose. You can use it in a pinch for other cooking activities. Very cool. Uh, this person, John R says, Nemo spoon shaped sleeping bags are amazing. I think you might, unless it's different. I don't have a Nemo bag, but my friend Mike and his wife both have them. And his wife has, he, Mike's always called it a peanut shape. I don't know what the official name is, but maybe that's the spoon shape. It kind of flares out in the middle. Those are kind of cool. I don't have anything like that. I just have mummy bags. But yeah, those do look neat. I guess you can move your knees around a lot in them. That's cool. Um, this one is from Andrew S. on the backpacking or budget backpacking gear list video. He says the Kelty Salita 2 that I mentioned in there is kind of a high end. It's not on my gear list because the whole point of the video was a $250 system. And I was mentioning my Kelty Salita tent, which I like. It's around four and a half pounds. It's one of the first pieces of gear I bought, but it was like 180 bucks. But I said, if you know you're going to stick with um, tent camping which I also prefer hammock camping. But if you know you're going to do that, it might be worth the investment compared to some of the heavier, less expensive tents. But you could always retire those tents, like a $40 Coleman tent. You could always retire that to car camping. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. But he pointed out that the Kelty Salita 2 is actually only 114 bucks without a ground cloth nowadays, which makes sense because I bought mine six-ish years ago, like, the summer it came out. So I probably paid like max price for it. So that's actually pretty cool. That that changes my plan up a bit. Um, as far as recommendations, it's a good tent. It's very small for two actual people. It's pretty cramped and there's only one door. So you have to step over the other person, but it does work. I, I found it great. I used it mostly as a one person tent and it had a decent amount of room um, in both uh, winter and summer, etc. Because he asked, does it work fine in the winter? Yeah, it works just Fine. I think any tent, unless you're expecting some serious snow loads, other than snow load, which would be like the weight of snow coming down on your tent. Other than that, I mean, I, there's really, as long as it's keeping wind and precipitation off of you, that's all you really need. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, I don't think tent's going to keep you any warmer. I don't think there's any difference there. Like a winter tent's going to keep you warmer necessarily. I don't think so, at least. I mean, I don't view a tent as a warmth type thing. So as long as it, uh, I can pop it up and anchor it down on the snow, which I've showed before, then I think any tent that you use during the summer, you can use during the winter pretty much. If it's a real lightweight guy, like I said, if you're expecting like a foot of snow or something, you want to make sure to keep brushing that thing off so it doesn't, you know, collapse potentially. But even the Kelty, I think, could probably handle a decent amount of snow on it, uh, the Salita, that is, before it uh, failed. Um, but yeah, so that is a good point on that. Thanks for bringing that up, Andrew S. And now I'm going to open some stuff up. Probably not just a sticker request because it's pretty big. Nope, it is. Okay. This person's very thorough. All right. I'm going to hook you up. Uh, Len, you got it. Sticker on the way, buddy. Ooh, I got a note and some stickers. Wow. These are cool. I got four of these and it says, go everywhere. It's a picture of a hammock with two people's uh, legs hanging out of it that are apparently uh, lounging. That's pretty cool looking. And that's from Joey and Denise. We're both hammock campers and backpackers and have really enjoyed following your travels. 
They most recently went to Linville Gorge. I got to get back there. That's down in North Carolina. I love it. Mike and I went there for his, uh, well, that's where he got his name, Trail Slipper. If you don't know the backstory on that, that was down in Linville Gorge. Thanks again for all your expertise. Well, that's debatable. And info on your channel. Awesome. Thank you. This is typed and it's from Adam. Syntax. Can I call you Syntax or do you prefer Mr. 77? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for your videos. Your early videos gave me the confidence to go out into the Rockies with a bunch of college buddies and have never backpacked. That have never backpacked. I was the camp expert. That was all info I learned from you and he did expert in quotes. That's right. Never consider yourself an expert. That's dangerous, right? And boring. It means that you've learned everything and who wants to do that? So with all that, my question is, what is the plan this summer? All right, cool. We're about to get some conversation here. Can we expect some classic solo videos where the gear in the trail are the stars? Now, don't get me wrong. I like all your videos, but my favorite is the classic style. Also, are the Rockies in your future? Possibly the Bighorns in Wyoming, Yellowstone. If you are ever in Nebraska, I will buy you a cheeseburger and a beer. Thanks, buddy. Thanks uh, for the sticker. Uh, yeah, send you a sticker. And let's see here. So a classic video where the trail and the gear are the stars. I hope that doesn't mean that I've uh, been putting myself in the new videos too much. Am I blabbing too much? That would never happen, right? Um, or perhaps I think maybe, I know a lot of people watch the videos for different reasons and there are a subset that like the solo videos the mo most. And that's probably because I have no one to talk to but the camera. And I also have kind of no one else with me to slow down or cause sheer boredom in by stopping and explaining pieces of gear while I'm out on the trail or setting up a camp. So there's definitely a different vibe to this trip. Yeah, there's going to be more solo videos for sure. I hope so. I'm kind of made a plan. We'll see. Don't hold me to it yet, but I want to try to do a trip video per month. I want to try at least do a trip per month. And if I get in that habit, no matter how long it takes to make the video afterwards and post it, I should mean that I'm doing a video per month. That also means that that doesn't mean it's always going to be solo, but most likely other people won't be able to jump on board quite as easily because I'm just going to pick times throughout the month that are opportune for me and just go. And they might be one-nighters, two-nighters max, real quick stuff, which is kind of old school classic Syntax 77, if you will, as well. So that's coming. I would say, yes, you can expect that. But also there's going to be group trips because most of my friends backpack now. They all have the bug and we go together a lot but not often enough. My wife, for sure, and Denali, I don't know. I think we got a decent range. We got the solo videos, the dog videos, the wife videos, the friend and group videos. But yeah, the solo videos are coming is the long and the short of it. Um, and the Rockies, yeah, the Rockies are in our future. Now, it won't be solo because going out there is kind of a big deal for people like myself on the East Coast. We are going to fly out this time. We're not going to drive like Mike and I did. And it's going to be myself, Mike, and both our wives. So Sarah and Danielle Disco. And we'll be going out to Colorado. We're going out for a week. We actually have a place to stay. But we're going to, while we're out there in the middle of it, do like a, at least a three-day, two-night, if not a four-day, adventure and then kind of bookend it with some times actually at a hotel and you know around town and stuff we don't know the specifics please if uh, i know we're staying i think boulder colorado type area i know we're not staying on the other side of the ridge we're not not in aspen um but if anybody has we're willing to drive uh, for sure. So if we have to go out, go over to aspen for a trip that's fine or if there's something nearby at the boulder area please let us know. We're flying into Denver. We're going to be there. If you have any trip ideas, throw them out there, especially on this vid. And um, I'll take it into consideration because we're going to do a trip. It is coming. Uh, but Wyoming still got to do Yellowstone, um, Nebraska. <sighs> yeah, those things are coming. I don't know when, but Colorado for sure. All right, let's open. I got a few more letters, but let's open a package. What's this squishy guy right here? All right, let's do it. What's, any hints on the outside here? Well, I guess so, yeah. It's got the Amazon smile on there. Can't tell if it is a viewer or a company. Who knows? Let's find out by opening it. Ooh, what's this? It appears to be some gloves. Fingerless gloves. Styling cycling gloves. wonder who sent these. There's no note inside. Which, you know, I know it's from Amazon, but sometimes there's like a, they do like a gift receipt just so they can add a little note, but I don't see anything. So it must be from a company. Let's check this out. Do any of you wear cycling gloves on the trail? 
I like to wear mine to the club just to look cool, but you know, kind of a big J look, but there you go. I mean, they'll definitely, <laughs> I'm going to wear these to the gym today. Mike, make Mike jealous how much cooler I looked than him and more swole, of course. Um, check that out. So the brand looks like Moriok. That's M O R E O K. Got some cycling gloves. All right. They got some nice padding on the palm area here for sure. As well as across the uh, first bend of the knuckles on the other side there. Moriok. All right, Moriok. Thanks. I'm going to um, check these out. Maybe pump some iron with them today, right? Or start riding a bike. You know, I don't own a bicycle. I'll have to get one. Or use these for backpacking. All right. Thanks, man. Very interesting. Does anybody else out there use gloves for on the trail? Obviously, I'm talking not for keeping your hands warm, but for protecting your hands. I guess if you're um, holding hiking poles all day, too, might not be too bad. Very cool. This is from Doreen. Enjoy your videos. <laughs> well, check this out. Enjoy your videos in parentheses solo or with Sarah or Mike and friends. Thanks. Keep up the vids. Got a solo camp twig stove and love it. A solo camp twig stove. I got to look into that. That's one thing I haven't messed with is like a little twig stove, like a little wood burning stove, but not wood burning stove, like a big one you'd have in your house, but they just look like a little can or a little structure that you burn twigs in. It's definitely been suggested to me. I'll have to uh, check it out someday but anybody out there have a wood burning little twig stove that you like and prefer i've seen some cool ones that kind of break down and fold down and then also there's got to be some diy stuff out there right for that i mean it can't be too complex i would assume i don't know let me know in the comment section but that's something i got to try so you bring up a good point there doreen little wood burning stove and then if you know you're going somewhere that's going to have twigs and like duff and stuff laying around you're good to go you don't have to spend money on fuel either, or carry the weight of fuel. Uh, this is from Deb. Down in Ohio, or up in Ohio, from me. Wanted to send you a shout out. Uh, she says, not much of a fan of winter hiking, just getting into the rain. It's not if it rains, it's when. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rain on the trail is always something, especially when you're locked into dates and you see that uh, forecast change you know, like the week before and you've already got time off from work and all that stuff, or it's just an open weekend. And you're like, oh, there's nothing I can do about it, but I want to get out there. So grab the rain gear and do it. We'd love to have one of your stickers and eventually going to get one of your t-shirts. Thank you, Deb. I'm going to send you that sticker. I hope it doesn't rain on you though. I hope it doesn't rain on me whenever I do this trip. Now the backpacking, budget backpacking video I was just talking about, the point of it is I want to do my companion style video. So I did that video to show all the gear Then I'm going to take everything from that video and at its least expensive mode, which is the $250 uh, tarp tent kind of thing. I know I'm not doing a hammock on this one, but it's because I'm testing a new sleeping bag. So I wanted to sleep on the ground, but I wanted to keep it light and cheap. So I went with the tarp and somebody actually brought up, speaking of viewer comments, C. Grig Siv, C. Grig Siv. Um, not a lot of punctuation here. It might be a text -to speech thing, but basically the gist of it is he says, awesome vid. Um, just my opinion. You could have used the tarp, the tarp you use for your trips with your hammocks. Um, so I think he's referring to our, uh, or my Kuban fiber hammock gear tarp, which is ultra light, but also cost me like $250 solid investment. I've talked about that before. But I, yes, I would have loved to have brought that originally. That's what I was going to do. I was going to do the Kuban fiber tarp with a sleeping pad underneath and just this simple sleeping bag, uh, the $30 one that I got sent by Andamano. But then I started thinking, wait, it's only 30 bucks for this. And that tarp, I looked over and I saw my cheap $10 trucker tarp, an 8x10 tarp. I was like, man, if I do that, plus if I do the $30 sleeping bag, the $55 backpack, I'm looking at it over there, the Scandinavian gear, and then the $10 tarp, $15 pad. Hmm, it got the gears turning. I'm like, that's the big three right there, and I'm at like 100 bucks. So I bet you I can put together a list for like under 300, and I ended up hitting 250. But anyway, that's the reason I didn't do that. 
I'm not going to bring it because it won't be fair to do that video and then go out and swap it out for this $250 Cadillac of tarps. I think that would kind of throw people for a loop. And it just wouldn't be right. I want to show how it works and if it works. A, for fun. And then B, just to build confidence in people out there that you don't need this crazy expensive gear. Yeah, you'll end up buying it like I did if you stick in the game for a few years or so, most likely. But it's you, you can get going without it. So that's what I'm trying to prove on this trip, or at least showcase, highlight. But in the future, yeah, I would love to experiment with that as well, the uh, lighter Cuban fiber tarps. So there's another comment for you. Now, in one package, and I do know what's in here. Ow. Ah! Paper cut. Ah, technical difficulties. Apparently, my camera died at some point towards the end of this video, right before I finally opened this package right here. It was my last thing to do. I'm gonna open it up, or should I say, it's already been opened up because I already filmed this, but inside is this. Another piece of gear for me to try out on the channel. I'm excited about this. It is a SteraPen. Now SteraPen's been around for a while, at least since I started backpacking back in 2011, 2012 kind of time frame. And now this one is their newest version. It's the ultralight version and it's, well, much lighter I would assume. Looks pretty small, so I'm assuming it's smaller than those earlier models. Now again, I've never used them. And on top of that, it is USB rechargeable, which is cool because from what I read up on just briefly, it looks like the old ones or the previous models uh, were either, I think, double A, but they suggested lithium batteries for best, uh, safest performance. And I know from, because that's what I put in my GPS is the, uh, like the Energizer Ultimate Lithiums. Those batteries are, they cost an arm and a leg. So to be able to recharge it via USB is pretty cool. Plus I'm already carrying a USB charger to power all of my camera gear. So I could indefinitely keep this thing alive. So I'm going to be testing this thing out soon. I'll take it out on a trip. The uh, backpacking video, the budget backpacking video, the trip that I'm going to do with that. Like I said, I want to keep everything in there accurate as far as the gear list goes. So I'm going to bring the Katadyne B Free filter on that because it was like, it's around under 40 bucks. So it's perfect for the budget list. But this, I think I'm going to bring in addition just so I can start testing it out in the real world or the real trail, if you will. And then I'll do a video uh, review on it as well. But just a quick look, here it is. Anybody out there have any experience with the SteraPen systems over the years? Or maybe this one, which I think just super recently came out. So I don't know if anybody else already has this guy. And if you don't know about it, it is basically, it uses UV light to kill any little bad guys in the water that normally you would filter out with a traditional water filter. This, you just swirl it around in there apparently for a length of time, like 90 seconds or a minute or something like that. And uh, it kills all the bad stuff in there. Now, back in the past when I first started backpacking and I had a filter, I used to always think that might be kind of weird because what if your water is kind of uh, murky or not that great to begin with? This is just gonna kill the bad guys, but you might still be left with some stuff in your water. Well, the more I think about it though, there are, exceptions to this but most of the times when I go on trips I'm in areas where the water is pretty nice and clear and beautiful and tastes just fine. The only thing I'm worried about is the little tiny bad guys that you can't see like Giardia or Giardia however you say it stuff like that. So in that case that water all I have to do is swirl this around in there. I don't have to mess around with pumps. It's really small as you can see it feels like it's only around two ounces so I'm excited to try it out um, and yeah so that's the final item that I had to open today was this new SteraPen and looking forward to using it. So please feel free to share your experiences with this or maybe other similar systems in the comment section below. Till next time, I better do this before the camera dies again apparently. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.